Apple is ready to begin production on its new series of processors, and these may include some of the most impactful changes we've seen on the lineup yet. Let's dig into what changes you can expect when Apple plans to release them and why you should care about the M4. I know that it may feel early to be talking about the M4 when the M3 only launched this past October and a refresh to the Airs happened only a month ago. But there's a reason for this expedited timeline. See, Apple really wanted to be first to 3 nanometer, and TSMC just wasn't ready yet. We're long past the days when naming a processor node 3nm or 3 nanometer simply referred to the length of the transistor gates. These days, it's more of a marketing term than an actual measurement. So in order to realize some of the performance gains, and to help its biggest customer get there first, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, came up with a stopgap solution. It was calling N3B. While N3B does have significant benefits over the 5 nanometer process used on the M2 chips, it's not quite where the 3 nanometer process will settle for the rest of the industry. It exists almost exclusively for Apple to use and will be a short-lived production run. That's why we're seeing the M4s move forward so quickly. The new chip will take advantage of new improvements to the mainstream version of TSMC's 3 nanometer process, called N3E. To make things even more confusing, TSMC has planned additional revisions to its 3 nanometer process node, dubbing them N3P and N3X. Confused yet? To keep a long story short, not all 3 nanometer processes are the same, and Apple kind of got early access to it. This is why we may see Apple skip the M3 Ultra entirely in favor of an M4 variant, but more on that in just a little bit. Getting back to the rumors, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman has written that production is beginning on the M4, M4 Pro, and M4 Max lineup of chips now, with the Ultra version following later on in the year. These chips are rumored to have the codenames Donin, Brava, and Hydra. Hydra? Hydra. Donin likely refers to the baseline M4 that'll arrive in future MacBook Airs, the iMac, the Mac Mini, and the entry-level MacBook Pro. Brava will encompass the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, which is destined for the high-end MacBook Pros and the high-end Mac Mini. The Hydra chip would be for the Mac Pro, and would probably be called the M4 Ultra, or even perhaps the M4 Extreme. Multiple reports, including an earlier one from Economic Times, have suggested the biggest change, even at a hardware level, will be Apple's focus on AI. It's already been heavily rumored that Apple will be introducing a litany of artificial intelligent features throughout iOS and macOS at WWDC. So of course, they've been working on improved silicon to match. The easiest way for Apple to increase AI performance is to increase the cores in the neural engine. Apple says the M3 neural engine is 60% faster than that of the M1, and the M4 will probably continue that trend. A new, more powerful AI-focused chip will be crucial to Apple's plans going forward. By the way, do you think Apple is right in prioritizing AI like this? Let me know down below in the comments and what, if any, new AI-driven features you'd like to see. Anyway, there are also big changes bound for Apple's most powerful chips. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hate to like rudely interrupt myself in the middle of a video because I have more cool things to talk about. But before we get to them, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Ivanki, that recently launched its Fusion Dock Max 1. It's designed exclusively for Apple Silicon Mac users and is the only dock on the market with a dual Thunderbolt connection. It is outfitted with 20 different ports, including plenty of USB-C, legacy USB-A, a fast 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, audio jacks, and HDMI. Here's one of my favorite things about it though, is I love how all of the USB ports are standardized in full speed. Sometimes you get ones that are like 10 gigabit or 5 gigabit and you have to pick and choose like which ones you're connecting your peripherals to based on what you're doing. No, not with this hub. It's a similar story with the monitor situation. Personally, I use USB-C and HDMI for my monitors. 
rarely ever DisplayPort. Yet, most other docks that I have reviewed include a DisplayPort connection on the back. Ivanki chose what makes sense for its actual users. Most Apple users are out there using USB-C and HDMI. I love that those are the options here. Plus, on the top of the line Mac, you can actually run four monitors at once with this thing. That's absolutely incredible and unheard of in this market. The whole dock is powered by two Thunderbolt chips on the inside, so you know this thing is not going to lag. And the dock floats in the air, which promotes good airflow to keep it cool while it's sitting on your desk. If you're like me and you want to upgrade your workflow, check out the Ivanki Fusion Dock Max 1. It's linked down below in the description as well as pinned in the comments. Now, let's go get back to the rest of the video. Due to the process node intricacies discussed before, the M3 Ultra doesn't really look like its predecessors, and the M4 Ultra may follow suit. To create both the M1 and M2 Ultra, Apple introduced something known as the Ultra Fusion Bridge. It would take two M1 or M2 Max chips, then fuse them via the interconnect to create the Ultra variant. With the M3 Max, the Ultra Fusion Bridge is suspiciously absent, as you can see in these scans shared on Twitter. That means to create the M3 Ultra, Apple have to find some new way to deliver that performance that users expect. There's a lot of wasted silicon when you're just bolting two chips onto one another, and it makes sense that Apple would be looking for some way to improve the situation. A leaker, CorpCry, who has gotten other rumors correct in the past, has suggested that Apple will drop the efficiency cores from its ultra high-end chips. Whether or not this happens with the M3 chip is questionable. However, signs do point towards Apple moving beyond the two chips in one for its high-end processors. One last rumor says Apple will up the memory support in the Ultra lineup to 512 gigabytes. That's up significantly from the cap of 192 right now. So when will we see these new M4-based Macs? The first Macs to include Apple's M4 series of chips will be released as soon as this fall and continue into 2025. While the consumer-focused Macs are a lock, the Pro series is a bit more of a wild card. I can see two different scenarios playing out. First, as Max Text Vadim suggests, Apple could release an M4 Ultra version of the Mac Pro at WWDC in just a few weeks. The idea being that starting with the M4 line, Apple will release the high-end Pro chip first, then work its way down the tiers. This has the added benefit of assisting production ramp, as those ultra high-end chips are notably low volume. It also prevents the lineups from cannibalizing each other. The only people that need those ultras know who they are, and why give them a reason to downcycle? We're already seeing a bit of confusion in the market, with users opting for older generation M2 and M1 MacBook Airs, there's a video on that linked here that you should check out, and Apple doesn't want this to happen to its Pro lineup. The second option is more in line with what Mark Gurman mentioned. He posits that Apple will release the M4, M4 Pro, and M4 Max this fall, then deliver an M4 Ultra-based Mac Pro in 2025, giving Apple more time to work on that high-end silicon. I think Vadim is right in that Apple will skip the M3 Ultra entirely and just wait for the M4 variant. In a lot of ways, the Mac Pro is a confusing machine in need of direction, and I don't think an M3 version is going to help that. It's also highly unlikely that Apple releases a new Mac Pro in June and then releases yet another new one in 2025. Even after I started production on this video, it was already scripted and halfway shot. Mark Gurman was added again with his predictions for the M4 rollout strategy, saying that he too expects to see the M4 versions of the iMac and entry-level MacBook Pro this year, the M4 Pro and M4 Max versions of the MacBook Pro late this year and into early 2025, and the Mac Pro and Mac Studio shipping in mid to late 2025. Which strategy do you think Apple is ultimately going to go with here? Regardless, Apple is hard at work on its next generation silicon, and there is a lot to be excited about. Be sure you are subscribed to the channel with those notifications turned on so you don't miss the next time that I post a video.